What's up, everyone? Welcome to the video. We're here breaking down this week 11 NFL DFS slate for DraftKings and FanDuel. Nothing really stands out too much to me as far as there only being a couple of options. It's kind of just your run of the mill slate for the most part, which I'm kind of looking forward to. But anyway, if this is your first time here, what's up? My name is Chris Pinelli. I break down NFL and NASCAR DFS each and every single week on this channel. And in this video specifically, what I'd like to do is go position by position with a small player pool that I do have some interest in as of right now on Friday afternoon. And then I like to build a lineup as we progress through it, more so for a single entry tournament build. And then I run the optimizer at the end to see who's popping the most as of right now. And hey, if that sounds good to you, well, you can do me one small thing in return, and that's leaving a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, and hit that bell so you don't know if I whenever I post new content. And if you have anything you want to say to me, making fun of me, or if you just want to give me some words of encouragement for some reason, well, you can certainly do that in the comment section down below. And as always, we will start with the quarterback position. I do have to mention, if you want access to the data sheet, that I post each and every single week. It's got the entire player pool. Everything's color coded nice and neat, so it's quite easy to follow. Everything that you could ask for in one place, projections, optimizer, ownership projections, the cheat sheets, Discord community. I do cover this for the NBA each and every single day as well. Links down below in the description or in the comment section if you are interested. But anyway, let's talk some quarterbacks here. So, so quick update here before we watch the rest of this. I recorded the portion coming up before the news dropped. The Bills-Browns game is moving to Detroit. I talked a bunch of how I like the theory of still playing the Bills, even if there is some snow. Obviously, that theory is dead now, and the ownership is no longer going to be low. It's a great spot versus the Browns. So just know the way I talked about them. I like them even more now in, in Detroit. I mean, the Browns' defense is not very good. So love the Bills. So just fair warning when you hear the rest of this, because obviously that's not happening anymore. But the guy up top, you might be wondering why the heck I have him on here, because isn't there supposed to be three to six feet of snow and 30 mile per hour winds? Yes, that's technically in the forecast over the course of this weekend, but it looks like most of the damage is going to be done on like Friday and Saturday for that snowstorm. I think during the game, it's not really supposed to do much whatsoever. It might be snowing a little bit, but they're going to have plenty of time to take care of the field and get it you know, blown off and whatever they do to football fields, I guess. But I don't think anyone's going to want to click on the uh, Bills passing attack here. So if we can get some, you know, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs stacks, a low ownership versus the Browns defense, which trust me, I'm a Browns fan. Their defense has not been good this year. You can definitely beat them. And we saw what the Dolphins did, scored around 40 points versus their defense last week. So I get it. If the weather is as bad as some people think it would be on Sunday during the game, I would not play them. But they still have about a 26 point implied team total here eight and a half point favorites and josh allen's obviously been incredible for fantasy purposes this year and for real life over 300 passing yards per game and over 50 yards on the ground i mean the guy's just been an absolute menace this season so if we can get them at lower ownership just because if people are afraid of the weather which i guess it's supposed to be better on sunday i will take that in tournaments i'm not sure i'd play josh allen in cash games i'd probably go to justin fields in cash but allen's fine with me in tournaments as long as the weather is clearing up by the time Sunday rolls around, but enough people have heard the news and just completely crossed this game off, which I do understand, but I mean, yeah, if you can get lower on Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen stacks, I take advantage of that when you can. Justin Fields, 7,600 bucks. He's gonna be your cash game quarterback the past two weeks. Has gone absolutely nuclear. I think he's what, had like two weeks in a row where he's had a 60 some yard rushing touchdown. Absolutely insane. Hasn't done too much of the air over the course of the season. But the touchdowns have been there the past couple of weeks. But on the ground, the guy's been just crushing it, especially you know, like the past month now. But on the season, we're currently sitting at 75 rushing yards per game, 0.6 rushing touchdowns, 4.4 yards per carry. And they get a great matchup here versus the Atlanta Falcons, 29th DVA versus the past, 22nd versus opposing quarterbacks. That includes 300 passing yards per game, which I know isn't really Justin Fields' forte, but that can still get up to running backs as well if you want to view yeah, Justin Fields as that. But 49 and a half point over under here, the highest implied team, or highest over under on the slate. He is going to be your cash game quarterback. I would assume he's going to be the highest owned quarterback, which does you know make a case for fading him in tournaments. But same could have been said last week, and that certainly did not work out, although he is more expensive this time around. Then we have Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, both playing this game here in Minnesota. I do think this is going to be one of the more popular games to target for tournaments this week and just really in general. Should be pretty high scoring, 47.5 point over under, only 1.5 point spread. And you can definitely beat the Vikings defense. Obviously, Dallas does have a pretty solid defense, but Vikings also have a pretty good offense as well with Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook and a couple of other pieces. So I'm definitely looking to stack this one up. I do prefer Dak over Cousins. 
if it came down to it, but I'm fine with both guys in this game. Should be pretty back and forth for the most part. But the Vikings are 27th versus fantasy quarterbacks this year compared to the Cowboys being 4th DVA versus the pass and allowing the ninth fewest points per game in the quarterback position. So it really all just comes down to if you're looking for the lower ownership on Kirk and he's a little bit cheaper, go that route. But just know the resistance is going to be a little bit tougher versus that tougher Dallas defense. But I'm fine with both quarterbacks, but going to lean towards a deck in that one. And then Dale Jones, if you need a cheaper option, I honestly don't hate it in cash games if you can't quite get the Justin Fields, although I'd highly recommend doing it. But Dale Jones is kind of like the Walmart version of Fields, if that makes any sense. He's cheap, and he gets a great matchup versus Detroit, a team that Fields just played and scored over 40 fantasy points against. And Dale Jones, not saying he's quite Fields on the ground, but he's mobile himself, and on the season, he's averaging over 40 rushing yards per game. And we know Detroit can give it up to rushing quarterbacks, and they're actually allowing the most points per game to the quarterback position on the season. And as you can see, over 40 rushing yards and half a rushing touchdown per game. And I, the problem is just the stacking options with, you know, with Jones are just, it's dreadful. You have Darius Slayton, who's been good the past few weeks. Uh, but that's I mean, that's about it. You have Wontel Robinson. He exists. And obviously, Kadarius Tony is long gone on Kansas City. So, yeah, not much to stack with him. So he's a quarterback that I could see playing naked if you just can't quite get the fields in a cash game format. But I'd really have a tough time clicking on Jones in tournaments. But if you wanted to go with Jones in a Slayton stack, it's dirty, but it could work at low ownership. And moving over to our lineup, a couple of ways we could go for sure. I am personally going to go the Dak Prescott route. I just want to stack that game up for this for this build specifically. I'm someone that does three max, so please don't copy and paste these. It's Friday. I don't know what I'm going to like by the time Sunday rolls around. Obviously, it's going to be something similar. But this is no guarantee that I play these lineups that I build. They're just for educational purposes and entertainment purposes to see what fits as we talk through some of the players that I like on the slate. And moving on to our ball carriers. I've said this many times this year. I haven't really spun up for running backs this season. I don't actually think I've done it yet. I even I didn't even play Derrick Henry in the week versus Houston. Fortunately, some of the cheap running backs did very well. Not quite Derrick Henry level, but... I haven't really seen the need to spin up for these guys because I feel like we can get similar upside from Barkley from a guy like Stevenson or Damian Pierce. So if you have the money for Barkley, yeah, it's a great spot versus Detroit. I'd have a hard time seeing them stop him at all. He's a home favorite, 24-point implied team total, and obviously crushing it on the air, 22 carries per game, over 100 rushing yards. He's involved in the passing game as well with his near 16% target share. And the Lions this season, allowing over 100 rushing yards, over rushing touchdown, 27 D versus the run, and 22nd versus fantasy running backs. And if you look at the offensive line versus defensive line matchup per PFF, the uh, Lions defense is giving up 1.66 defensive yards before contact, which is only behind Damian Pierce of the running backs they were talking about in his matchup versus the Washington Commanders. So, yeah, good spot for Barkley. It's just a matter of being able to afford him, really, which, honestly, you're probably going to have a hard time doing that. Uh, Josh Jacobs, 7500 bucks. He's always kind of a boring play, but if you're looking for volume, he's definitely playable. And I mean, he's been pretty good at scoring touchdowns this season. He's actually been very efficient on the ground, 5.2 yards per carry, getting close to 100 rushing yards per game. And he's gotten beefed up in the passing game this season, which has made him a lot better for DFS purposes this year. 12% target share, which equates to a four target per game basis. And then... Denver, I mean, they're kind of mid-pack versus the run, 20th DVOA, 15th versus fantasy running backs. But I will tell you, last time Jacobs faced Denver, went absolutely off. Not that that really means too much, but at least he has excelled in this matchup before. Joe Mixon, 7400 bucks. He had a bye week last week, and well-deserved. I mean, he had, what, over 50 fantasy points in that last game? <laughs> Just absolutely crushed it versus the Carolina Panthers. You can't expect that going forward, but he always gets the volume. It's just a matter of him just not being efficient whatsoever this season. We're talking under four yards per carry, but he's been heavily involved in the passing game, five targets per game, getting close to 17 carries. We're probably going to see 20 plus touches here from Joe Mixon in a good spot versus Pittsburgh. I know they haven't been as bad versus the run as they have been versus the pass this year, but overall, I do expect the Bengals to win this game. And they are three and a half point favorites, so Mixon should get his around 20 touches, which is fine for me at a 7K price tag. Then we get to some of the cheaper backs here. Andre Stevenson, $6,700. He's kind of been an autoplay for about a month now. Damian Harris is now back. Did see 11 carries in his last game, which did eat to eat into the Stevenson workload a little bit, but he's still getting plenty of targets, which is going to make him extremely valuable. The past three weeks, he's seen eight, seven, and seven targets. That's really good. I'm not sure how many people really think of Stevenson as some 
big pass catching running back but the targets that he's getting consistently this year because even the week before that he had five targets like it's actually been very good 17 percent target share close to five targets per game he's going to get you around 15 ish carries probably see 15 plus here versus the jets jets have been a pretty good defense this year but stevenson he's also been very good and his involvement in the passing game has made him well worth his price tag in recent weeks damian pierce 6500 bucks he was doing terrible last week versus the giants somehow ended with around 13 fantasy points i think he caught a couple balls at the end and thank god he ripped off that what 60 yard run he had at some point because it was looking pretty brutal for a long time gets a tougher matchup here versus washington they've actually been pretty good versus the run this season fifth fewest points for getting the running back position in their second dvoa but with the volume that he gets at his price point he is certainly in play but the matchup's a lot tougher than it was last week versus the giants who are allowing well over 100 rushing yards per game this season but he's fine if you're just looking for volume below 7K, but I would prefer Stevenson. And then David Montgomery, I can see him being pretty popular as well. The problem is if you're playing cash games, you probably don't want to roster Justin Fields and David Montgomery together. So in lineups and tournaments that you don't have Fields, I think it's a pretty good idea to get to David Montgomery. And also Khalil Herbert's out, which is huge for David Montgomery here in a really good spot versus Atlanta. Like I said, the highest over on the slate at 49 and a half. They are three-point dogs here, but that's nothing too drastic. And on the season, the numbers, they are what they are. Obviously, Montgomery has not been very good. But with Khalil Herbert being out, that's definitely a big boost for him. And the Falcons, as you can see, have been in bottom defense versus the run this season. So I have no concerns about him. And at that price point, I could honestly see you playing both together, him and Fields. But I just feel like it's not the best correlation-wise. Then Devin Singletary, 5800 bucks. Like I said, the weather shouldn't be as bad as people are expecting during game time. Leading up to the game, it's supposed to be terrible, right? can't deny that but i do think it's still supposed to be snowing a little bit it's going to be a bit windy and if you want some bills exposure and you just can't buy into the passing attack devin singletary is obviously in a pretty good spot here versus the browns who have been terrible versus running backs i mean the third most points per game they're dead last 30 second dba versus the run 115 rushing yards per game and their interior defensive line is just absolutely awful so if you're just looking for bills exposure and you can't quite click on josh Allen, stefan diggs i don't mind getting some Devin singletary and I mean, it checks all the boxes. Eight and a half point favorite at home, high implied team total. The weather's going to be a bit crappy. I mean, he should be in a pretty good spot if he can get to the end zone. And moving back over to our lineup, I do need to keep in mind that since I'm using Dak, I'm probably using one of his pass catchers. Well, not probably, I am. And that's going to be CD Lamb more than likely. And I want to run it back with a Viking, and Justin Jefferson's like the main Viking you'd want. And if we go over to the wide receiver tab, He's 9100 bucks, so we can't splurge on running back as much as I'd like to get to Saquon Barkley. So we'll scroll down a little bit. And the first guy I think I want to plug in is Dave Montgomery. I'm not using Justin Fields, obviously, in this specific build. And I do want some exposure to the Bears because obviously a high total in that game, high implied team total. So it's 6100 bucks with no clue Herbert. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'd really just try to take my pick of one of these 6K, 7K running backs. We'll just roll with Stevenson for now. If we have to change it up a little bit, I don't think it's a big deal. But going this route leaves us just over 5K for the remaining players. It's going to get a bit tough once we plug in like a CD Lamb and Justin Jefferson, but we're going to try our best to make this work. And speaking of wide receivers, we'll start here. And I do always want to mention like, yes, you can dive into the individual matchups. I just think it's a bit noisy. Good wide receivers can tend to beat whatever matchup they are given. Sometimes it's a little different. I mean, there's always going to be outliers, but it really all just comes down to our stacks for the most part. Like... If I'm using Dak, I don't really care about the match. Like, I'm using Dak because the matchup's good, but I'm playing CD no matter what. Like, it's just how it works. So up top, Justin Jefferson. He's questionable with the toe injury. I mean, I'm going to assume he plays, so I have no concerns there. The guy's been an absolute stud this season. And Dallas so far, I mean, yeah, we can pull up matchups if you want. They're kind of bottom half in terms of points per game allowed to wide receivers, although they are a pretty good pass defense, fourth DVOA. But let me just pull up their numbers on the season, target distributions, because I think that's probably the most important, because what do we want in DFS? We want volume. Uh, Stephon Diggs, like I said, I don't think a lot of people are going to want to click on the Bills passing attack because they're just so worried. But if we get news or just look with our eyes and see what it's doing in Buffalo, if it's starting to look decent, like it could still be snowing in the passing game work. I've, I've seen it before. But if it's dumping down snow and there's like inches of snow on the ground, okay, well, I'm probably going to, hop off the Bills passing attack but if it's not terrible I'll take it I mean they're still going to score points so obviously Dix gets all the volume in the world and an absolute machine 
CeeDee Lamb, if you're using Dak, you pretty much have to play him. He had a great game last week, and obviously getting Dak back over Cooper Rush is a big boost for him. I'm in Ross St. Brown. Finally got back on track last week, and if you we were ever playing over on prize picks, we took advantage of that prop being extremely low. Got 10 yards of value on prize picks compared to the DK Sportsbook. Yeah, I want to say 11 targets. Uh, a lot of catches. I, there was like 9 or 10, I feel like, but got around 100 yards. Did not get into the end zone, unfortunately, but still a very good game. And gets pepper with targets. And if you are stacking the New York Giants for some reason, like I mentioned, I think it's possible with Daniel Jones. If you want to do a dirty stack, but I don't even have him on here, but Darius Slayton, he'd be the obvious run back option. If you want to use a guy like Saquon Barkley, it's a little bit of correlation there to use Amon Sa- Ross St. Brown, but I just think he's a fine play at 7200 bucks for the bottom that he gets, the talent that he is, and it's a beautiful matchup versus the New York Giants. And not a terrible over-under on this slate. I mean, it's not great at 44 and a half, but compared to the slate where there's no game over 50, it's not too bad with a three-point spread. T. Higgins with no Jamar Chase, just the wide receiver one for Joe Burrow in a great matchup versus Pittsburgh. They've been awful versus wide receivers this season, allowing the second most points per game and just under 200 receiving yards specifically to the wide receiver position. He's in a very good spot to take advantage of. I don't have Joe Burrow on here, but he's definitely playable. I just think his upside's always capped without... Uh, Jamar Chase, but I don't mind playing just a couple of his wide receivers. Uh, Michael Pittman, 6,100 bucks. Getting Matt Ryan back, it's always going to be good for him. He had plenty of targets last week, just didn't really turn into much. And I want to say he's only got what, one touchdown on the season, if I remember correctly. Just I worry about the upside, but 6,100 bucks. It's not like we're paying a premium anymore. Very low implied team total here versus the Eagles, but they are going to be trailing. At least they should be in this game. But the Eagles surprised us last week versus the Commanders. So I wouldn't say it's a given. But being in a six and a half point dog here, I think the Colts should have to throw, and obviously Matt Ryan will look his way. Cortland Sutton, he's kind of on here because I was running out of good options, and I wanted some guys to talk about, but he had targets last week, and he's definitely the best option for Denver, and it's a good matchup versus the Raiders. They're 32nd DVA versus the pass this season, so I would like to try to maybe get one pass catcher versus this defense. I'm not looking to stack them up. I'll tell you that right now, but if you're looking for a one-off around this price point, I have no problem at all with Sutton. Terry McLaurin, $5,900. He's always been pretty good with Taylor Heineke. Had a great game versus the Eagles on Monday night. Their 25th DVA versus the pass. This matchup versus Houston. 22-point implied team total here. I think he's just fine because of the price point. Uh, Garrett Wilson, $4,900. Last time he played New England, popped off. I liked him. I want to say he was $4,100, $4,300 at very low ownership. But once again, very similar spot here. Corey Davis, currently questionable, but was not spotted at practice on Thursday. I would say it's unlikely he plays again. I mean, we'll see, but... Either way, 400 bucks. Gary Wilson is definitely the best option on this offense. And I mean, spot versus New England, I wouldn't say it's my favorite spot in the world, but I mean, the target should be there. And I don't mind them. Then Ben Skyronek, I like to call him Walmart Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup is now out, obviously, for because he's getting surgery for his ankle sprain. And this is really just the theory on, I've said this before on like showdown slates where, yeah, I'll play Ben Skyronek. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Because I think I think Matthew Stafford gets him confused with Cooper Cup sometimes. So that's how he ends up with targets. And it looks like Stafford's going to be back this week. And if that's the case, well, I mean, Skowronek, he's kind of the same. I mean, obviously not nearly as good as Cooper Cup, but he looks just like him. So Stafford might just look his way. And I know we all know the joke that Stafford only throws the white guys. So him and Higby should definitely be in a pretty good spot this week. We'll see about Allen Robinson, but at this price point, I don't mind it. Obviously, don't expect Cooper Cup things by any stretch of the imagination, but below 4K for a guy that could see five, six plus targets in a good matchup versus New Orleans, don't mind that as a pump play. And moving back over to the lineup, this is where we lose all of our money. And hopefully not for DFS, but this is where we lose it all in the salary cap department. We're going to pl- try to plug in Justin Jefferson because we're running it back with Dak Prescott, and we're going to throw in CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, it's going to hurt a lot. 3500 left. Although... Keep in mind, tight end's usually cheap, defense is usually cheap, so if we can just find some like four to five K guys, which we should be able to, this is this is playable. I thought I thought it'd be worse. I thought we'd only have like upper two K or lower three K, so I don't feel too bad about that. And moving on the tight ends, don't really see myself spending up for these guys. I, Mark Andrews is there, he's questionable, but I don't really want to go with Mark Andrews, even if he does play. So we're gonna start off with Dalton Schultz, forty three hundred bucks. It would definitely make sense for the lineup we are building uh, with Dak Prescott returning seven to eight targets the past couple of weeks. Got into the end zone last week, I believe, as well. I want to stack this game up. Schultz is a fine option if he can get his five plus targets, which he should be able to. Uh, Fire move, 4200 bucks. If you are stacking up Cincy, he's a fine run back option. He just gets targets every single week, guys. Solid. I mean, can't get too excited about it, but close to seven targets per game. 
plus the five catches. If you can get you four to five catches and 50 yards with a chance of a touchdown, well, I guess you really can't complain too much at 4,200 bucks. Tyler Higley with no Cooper Cup just opens up more targets for everybody in that offense because Cup's a guy that's going to get you 10 to 20 targets each and every single week. So you take him out of the equation and if Matthew Stafford is indeed back, well, that's definitely big ups for Tyler Higby, Ben Skowronek, uh, Van Jefferson's returning while well, he returned last week, got into the end zone, then Allen Robinson as well. And Higby on the season has already seen seven targets per game. It's just the problem is his dot's so low. It's currently at 3.1 this year. I mean, just getting no air yards whatsoever. But for the targets he gets, it's fine on a PPR site like DraftKings. Just wish he could get into the end zone for once this season. Uh, Greg Dolchich didn't do anything last week. He was pretty chalky, 3,800 bucks. Obviously a good spot versus the Raiders. They can give it up to tight ends, but I mean, I'm not really like, I'm not going my way to play any of these guys. It's just really who fits. I think for cash game, it's either going Schultz or Higby. Higby, I could see being the most popular right now with no Cooper Cup, but I think it'd be somewhat close. Then Hayden Hurst, 3,500 bucks. So I am realizing I have just about every single bangle here and I did not put Joe Burrow in the quarterback section. So if you just want to pretend I did put him there, go for it. I don't. I don't really think I'm going to be using Joe Burrow on this slate, but I do like his pass catching options the more I talk about it. So I guess I am kind of talking myself into it. It's just without Jamar Chase, I kind of hate it, but it is what it is. It just makes it cheaper, I guess. So you could pretend I threw Joe Burrow in there because all of his pass catching options have pretty much made it on here. And then moving on to the defenses, as we always do, we scroll to the bottom and try to find our first viable one here. And the Steelers... I know I like all the Bengals, but at the same time, you can get sacks versus the Bengals. You can get some turnovers from Joey B. It's only a 40 and a half point over under with a 22 point implied team total against them. So at the same time, I think they're viable. I still think the Steelers are playable 2300 bucks, especially since they're playing at home. I got them for around seven points. That's not bad. That actually might be the best point of defense on the slates. So I could see them having ownership. The Texans versus the Commanders, it doesn't feel good, but they don't project terribly. Uh, the Saints at 3K versus the Los Angeles Rams with no Cooper Cup. I don't mind that at all. Only a 17-point implied team total against them. Three-point favorites at home. I mean, yeah, if you got the extra money, I, I could imagine the Saints probably being the chalky defense here. So, I mean, it just it doesn't really matter what defense you play. I mean, just play the cheapest one you can that doesn't that you don't think is going to get absolutely throttled. Like, don't play the Browns defense versus the Bills unless it's a complete snowstorm blizzard. Don't play the... Yeah, I think you guys get the idea. So just cheap as defense you can that's viable that makes things work. And heading over to our lamp to finish this off, let's just plug in the Steelers defense here since they're cheap. Just to see money-wise, that leaves us just under 4K. Uh, I would like to go the Dalton Schultz route, although I'm just not sure I can find two sub 4K players that I think are going to look good because at wide receiver, we didn't have one besides Skowronek. But... We can try it. So if we do plug Dalton Schultz in, that's 3,700 bucks left. I mean, geez, Skyrnex even more expensive than that, but we'll plug him in. That's 3,500 for the last spot. I don't think there's really anybody I like at $3,500. Unless you want to go the double tight end route. I mean, it's work sometimes. It's not often that it's really the best route to go. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to fit. I mean, yeah, you could take a complete pump play and try your best. But let's try to save a couple bucks. I don't think Schultz is an absolute must here. I, maybe if we dropped, you know what? I kind of do want the double stack. So if we took out Stevenson, just trying to go over, a, go through a thought process with you guys. We'll drop Stevenson because I don't think he's a complete must. We have Singletary, fifty hundred bucks. That saves us some money. That's forty four hundred dollars. That feels a lot better. Now I still don't think there's really anybody I liked in that price range, but at least some of these guys are. A little bit more playable. Like Paris Campbell, I don't think is a terrible play at 4,300 bucks. I know we didn't talk about him, but I mean, at least he get, gets targets with Matt Ryan. So I'll let you guys use your imagination to fill it out however you want. If you wanted to go double tight end, you could go that route, but usually not my most favorite way to go. And to be honest, it still works if you took out Dak Prescott for a guy like Kirk Cousins here, because if you wanted to fit in a Garrett Wilson, this stack still works as you have Cousins with Jefferson then ran back with Lamb. And also ran back with Schultz, which is fine. Like last week, my best lineup was a chief stack with Mahomes and Kelsey. And then a double stack ran it back with, um, or double ran it back, I should say, with Zay Jones and Christian Kirk. And obviously that worked out quite nicely because at 4,900 bucks, I think that does get us to the Gary Wilson range. So still works that way too. And I don't currently have any settings put in place. So if you are someone that does build 150, make sure you have those put in place because these lamps probably look pretty ugly. 
because I usually want to pair a pass catcher with my quarterback, run it back with somebody else, which you can do in the settings here. And if you do want access to the optimizer, budget on lineups and things like that, link is down below in the description. But let's just see who's popping right now in the opto. And keep in mind, it's only Friday afternoon, so things can obviously change since then. But Stevenson popped up in just about every single lineup. David Montgomery in almost every single one. It's a lot of Damian Pierce. I mean, you know, Benjamin's here now. It does take a little bit of hit on him. I don't think I could obviously play that much. Jones, it's just the matchup thing versus, I don't really like who's popping so much the past two there, Jones and Pierce. Lots of Garrett Wilson though, lots of Sam Brown, Jacoby Myers. I was kind of iffy on putting him in the video. I just didn't love the spot versus the Jets. So yeah, I mean, a couple guys do surprise me, but some of them don't, especially a lot of David Montgomery with no Herbert. I think that's kind of a pretty easy play this week. It just doesn't feel great pairing him up with Justin Fields, but I do think there's enough points to go around for that to work out. So, yeah, obviously you have to play around your exposures because I think you'd be insane to play that much of some of these guys for sure. But with that being said, guys, that's all I got for you guys on this week's video. If you did enjoy, make sure you have a like down below. and Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you want to tell me anything you want to do, something funny, tell me a joke, whatever it may be, comment section down below. Don't forget to check out Price Picks because it's the sponsor of the show. And you can use promo code CPEN to get an instant deposit match bonus up to $100. And they now offer up to 25x if you get six out of six entrants right. So insane potential there. Obviously, a bit of a long shot, but the fun is there for it. And that's one of the reasons why I love Price Picks. So check it out if you haven't yet done so. But I wish you the best of luck, and I'll see you all next time.